businesses already struggling with the impacts of COVID are suffering a new blow under the government's new isolation rules. The close contact domino effect is forcing businesses to close their doors because of a lack of access to rapid antigen testing. To discuss this, the Auckland Business Chamber CEO Michael Barnett is with us and Health Professor Des Gorman. Good morning. Good morning. Um, Hi, good morning. Good morning. Michael, I want to start with you. Do you have any gauge yet on how many businesses have staff isolating in the city at the moment or how many have had to close because their staff are having to isolate? I think it's not just Auckland, but I think if you look at the various communities uh, like Queenstown, where you're dependent on... Um, hospitality, you depend on accommodation. Um, these are the areas where <clears throat> there's high losses of people and an inability to operate. Here in Auckland, there's large numbers of businesses um, where there's hundreds of people um, who are isolating and isolating unnecessarily uh, because of the current rules. When you say unnecessarily, Des, I want to bring you in here. Are people isolating unnecessarily if they are close contacts from working alongside somebody who has tested positive for Omicron for COVID-19. Are they isolating unnecessarily? Yes, I think so, uh, Ryan. I think it's time to have a more liberal view of how we manage people who are close contacts. And, and in fact, I think businesses need to accept that the government's uh, systems are overwhelmed, whether that's contact tracing or testing or whether that's isolation and MIQs and they need to create a series of scenarios and for each scenario they need to evolve their own solution and that solution will be based on the tools of uh, rapid antigen testing, vaccination of course with a, a booster and temperature testing. So I think it's time for businesses to actually produce a plan of, of their own to basically go it alone. <laughs> So you're, you're suggesting this morning that people ignore the official government advice and come up with their own solutions? I'm suggesting that they produce their own solutions because in reasonably short order, the official government advice will be an extension of what it is now, which is that you need to be self-managing and self-helping. OK, Michael, that brings into question the issue of rapid antigen tests then, doesn't it? So do we have enough? Do businesses have enough? Um, I think there is enough, but I think, you know, the worst thing that we have at the moment is if I <clears throat> go to the gym or something like that, 50 or 60 people there, tomorrow there's a, a close contact, everybody is going to stay away from work. That's going to affect business. What we should have is a situation where if we are a close contact or a casual contact, that what we do is we rapid antigen test. In my opinion, that's a... You're either... You know, you've either got COVID or you haven't. If you haven't, but you're at risk, then you test. That, to me, we're going to see a workforce retained. We're not going to encourage absenteeism. We're not going to affect businesses and families. Des, those tests aren't foolproof, though, are they? And just coming back to your earlier point, the whole reason we've been told to follow these rules is so we don't overwhelm our hospital system. Um, is, would your advice not fly in the face of that? Well, look, I think, first of all, the tests have a false positive rate, which is good, because, I mean, what you want in a test like this is that it doesn't have false negatives. So I think the test is not as accurate as a PCR test, but it serves the purpose very well. And I think if you look at this current uh, outbreak, it's actually producing quite mild disease, despite quite a few thousand cases now. There's 50-odd in hospital and none of those are in ICU, and thank God for that. So, no, I actually think businesses need to develop a management strategy for the rest of the year, which in fact tries to get a balance between risk and productivity. And I actually think it's time for people to go back to work. And I mean, I think as humans, we're a social species and we thrive on social interaction. And I think it's time to actually start in, in, in our, uh, enabling that again. And I think with the judicious use of rapid antigen tests and daily temperatures and so on, that it should be possible to do that. OK, but what you're essentially advocating is, is a defiance of, of the government's rules. I mean, we had hospitalisation predictions uh, in early February that by, um, you know, the, the peak of this outbreak, we'd have between 200 and 800 hospitalisations per day. This was all based on quite limited data. Should we not be worried about that? Look, I think, first of all, I'm not uh, suggesting that people 
disobey current government rules. What I'm saying is that very shortly there's going to be a situation where there will be a necessity for people to self-manage. And I think people right. have to get ready for that and have a series of plans in place so that when the government accepts that the current settings simply aren't workable, they're not tenable, then in fact businesses are ready and they have their scenario modelling all already done. Uh, as for hospitalisations, I mean, what we're seeing so far is a very low rate of hospitalisations and an even lower rate of people going to ICU. And you'd expect that in a community which is over 90% vaccinated. You'd expect that with a virus which doesn't appear to be as virulent as previous forms of the virus. So, in fact, I think we're seeing already that a lot of people will become unwell, but they're not going to become seriously unwell. And that's a good thing. Um, Lord, let's, let's talk about the critical businesses, Michael, who have been given access to the rapid antigen test as of yesterday. What stories are you hearing about how well that's going or otherwise? Um, it's prob <clears throat> probably otherwise. I think what we have is a situation where um, the government has divided the business community. It says those that are critical, those that aren't. Let me tell you, every business is critical, every worker is essential. They should have the opportunity to work. We shouldn't be destroying businesses or families. I think I agree with what Des is saying. It's not a case of um, going against the government. It's about the government changing their narrative. At the moment, it's negative. It's about red light. It's about stop. It's about stay at home. We need to change that. And government needs to talk to business to find out what works best for them and for us.